God's good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen, my friends, and amen. A few announcements this morning. We have visitor cards in the pews. If you're a guest, we'd love for you to fill one of those cards out for us. Also, there are prayer cards in the pews as well. Whether it's public or private, fill out those cards. Either one, drop them off in the offering plate, where you may have received your bulletin this morning from Dale. Also, um, there are written copies of the sermon in the back of the sanctuary there, near where the bulletins are piled up. If you'd like one, go ahead and grab it. Also, you can check out the Facebook page and YouTube pages for both worship services video as well as audio if you're so interested. Experiencing God Growth Groups will begin again Sunday, January 15th is the first Sunday we'll be talking about them in worship, and then the groups will meet that week. So in other words, if your group's on Tuesday, that will be January 17th, Tuesday after that uh, January 15th Sunday. Also, if you're interested in the Moravian Daily Texts, we can order some. We've run out of copies, but if you'd like one, give us a call at the church office. We can order you one um, if you are so interested in them. They're very helpful for Tina and I. Marvelous Monday starts up January 23rd. We'll run through March 27th. Details, of course, are on the screen behind me. Can't wait. Youth group, nothing tonight. Next Sunday night, we'll have our planning night. So that's January 8th will be our first um, Youth meeting of the new year as we talk about what we're going to do and how we're going to do what we're going to do. Backpack program, if they're looking for um, items, check out the program in front of you or the screen behind me for the needs as well as for the food pantry. If they're need a tea and cake mix if you're so inclined, please bring those things in. Um, oh, there we go. For the angel tree, tree for foster care, we had 43 kids we were able to help out this year. Well done, folks. 43 kids at Christmas gifts who may not have had anything this year. Incredibly well done. There's a town hall meeting here to deal specifically with drugs in our community on January 18th from the Coke group. Bob, you were just flying through there this morning. <laughs> I'm impressed. Or I messed it up tweaking it one of the two. So, either way, January 18th, details should be in our programs. There we go. Thanks, Bob. Well done. Um, for a town hall meeting here again that day. Details are on the screen, but if you don't read the paper, if you're not paying attention, it's incredible and terrifying how drugs are ripping our community apart. <laughs> That's on January 18th. It's an open event. For a moment of recognition this morning, thank you. Dale Boyd was in here before 4 p.m. Christmas Eve. Didn't leave till I kicked him out. Well, I don't know if I literally kicked him out, but Dale was here the whole time. How many hours is that? Five, six hours? Dale was here to make sure our worship space was ready for everyone else. So Dale, thank you. Lolan, thank you to Carrie and for Alan and the hours they put in through Advent. Lolan, Carrie, well, you booked out of here. I think it was 5.05 and she was running out the door to get up to Trinity on Christmas Eve. But the sacrifices they made, what a gift. For the nursery staff, Kylan and Erica, who were both here on Christmas Day as well as Christmas Eve, Cassidy came in for the 8 o'clock service as well. Thank you. Talk about the sacrifice, giving up that time to be here for Christmas Eve. And then finally, uh, Tiffany Garing, our cleaning staff professional here at the church, Tiffany will be stepping down. Her um, work schedule, let alone also school schedule, is becoming more and more difficult. So Tiffany will be set, stepping down. We want to recognize her for her four plus years here cleaning. But also, we're looking for someone else who would take that position on. It's about 10 hours a week for cleaning here at the church. Details and a at least the tentative job description we have can be found in the church office. So if you know someone you're interested, contact us at the church office. But next time you see Tiffany, thank you. Tell her thank you. I've seen her here, in here before 6 a.m. some days. I've seen her over here at the church cleaning after 9 p.m. This is a young woman who was willing to use whatever hours she could to make sure this place was clean. Friends, let's prepare our hearts for worship.
thank you for making Sarah do that. Did I, have, did I say that right? I'm oh, just joking, Sarah. Thank you so much. Friends, let's greet one another with the love of Christ. Good morning again. Good morning again, everyone. Good morning again.
last time for a children's message of our youngest folks, or folk, who would like to come forward and a great thing. Like it's you, me, and Thaddeus, and the silence around them. So what was last night? Do you guys remember? What do we call last night? Help from the audience? Easy. Nicely done. Nice job with that. What do we call today then? New Year's Eve. Somebody actually said New Year's Eve. Somebody was up way too late last night. <laughs> uh oh, they may never go to bed if they still think it's New Year's Eve. Some of those grown-ups, you never know. That's right, today is New Year's Day. Anything special for you about New Year's Day? Daddy's put his thinking cap on. No, nothing. No. See, some people do these New Year's resolutions. You ever hear about them? Like they'll say, like, I'm going to try to lose weight this year, or I'm not going to. I'm going to try to not spend as much money, or I'll buy a pass of Brian a lot more Snickers. I don't know what their New Year's. <laughs> <sighs> Nobody made that a resolution. It looks like. Yeah. Anything new you want to do this year, like compared to last year? Drive slower, maybe? No? Nothing? Hey, good for you. Yeah. For me, one of the things is to constantly remember that I want to serve Jesus the best I can. That's always easy to do, because some days it's a real headache and real pain. Um, because sometimes I want to do what I want to do and not what God wants me to do. But for me, today is a reminder of this from Philippians chapter 3, one of my favorite passages in all the Bible. Where it says, friends, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. What's that mean? Have you guys ever been in a race? Like, have you ever raced at the gym? You ever have a race where you really didn't want to finish the race and you pulled, you know, you hurt yourself? Maybe it was way too long of a race. Yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Whenever I was in um, high school, we to run the mile, we had to do it in a certain amount of time, and that last quarter miles was a real headache, a real pain, because I didn't want to finish. I think my foot hurt, my head hurt. Somehow in July, or I mean in uh, May, yeah, May, not July, we had school in July. May, it felt like it was snowing outside, 100 degrees, you know what I mean? Like, enough that made you want to finish that race. So that you just have to press on, to keep on fighting to finish. Model for you is that, same thing for me. This whole idea about following Jesus as best we can. So, why don't we pray? Father, help us to follow Jesus, even whenever it gets to be difficult. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Now, I've got something for you. I have here either animal crackers or pretzels, because it's the New Year's. So maybe you're trying to turn over a new leaf, you know, and instead of eating all candy all the time. Yeah, whatever. I know what you guys really want. But I've got, still, animal crackers or pretzels here. Go ahead and grab a bag, whatever you like. Just don't open them up in the sanctuary here. They make a mess. All right. Animal crackers, pretzels. Go ahead and grab a couple bags, whatever you like. Or one of each, whatever floats your toboggan. Oh, can you get two? Go for that. Nice. Friends, what do we got? Thanks for this morning. What would you like to praise God for who God is? Is there anything we need to be praying for? Well, Vern handed me a couple of these prayer requests this morning. One's for Simon Yoder, who's battling cancer. Two is Bill to Julia, who also is in the fight for his life. Anyone else? Anything else we need to be praying for, my friends? Anything you want to thank God for or praise God for who God is? Sandra. I have no idea. I want to. So if you didn't hear what Sandra just said, praise God. It's hormone replacement treatment, not chemo, not radiation, if I'm correct there, Sandra, right? 
to deal with and battle with cancer. Praise be to God. Friends, is there anything else you want to give God thanks for? Praise God for who God is. What do we need to be praying for? I was actually be praying for Bernie Palmer's family, where Bernie passed away on Christmas Day after Bernie had been born in 1939 on Christmas Day. So, one, that's for the family, too. Imagine Christmas in the future here for them. Okay? Friends, why don't we go through the word together in prayer? Father, in the midst of New Year's Eve, and for some of us who recovered from last night's festivities, in the midst of New Year's Day, and the thoughts of resolutions, or college football, or the NFL today, in the midst of everything else we have going on, we set this time aside for you. We thank you so much that you're in the business of making all things new. That's part of Jesus, what your whole purpose was to come here, to make all things new, including us. That the Bible tells us you make us into being new creations. That we're new creatures because of Jesus Christ. That somehow everything's been turned over and started over. The whiteboard has been cleansed. The chalkboard has been washed off. That, Father, everything we've done in the past, good and bad, is no longer held against us because of what Jesus did. And he making all things new. Talk about love that you have for us. Because there are things that still plague me after, 20, after 40 years, let alone in between. And you're in the business of making all things new. You're in the business of changing us to follow Jesus better. You're in the business of forgiving us of our past and healing of us the wounds that are there, that the scars that we see from the things we've done, that they're slowly, beautifully changing. We thank you, Father, for your hand at work as you're making all things new. For this report, for Sandra, <coughs> for hormone replacement therapy, not chemo, not radiation. Yeah, we come before you realize that we're asking for you to heal the cancer that's there. Eradicate it, Father. Use a hormone replacement therapy or just go in spite of it. We're praying for healing in the name of Jesus. I was asked to be with Pam as well in the midst of her battle with cancer. We ask, Father, that you be with Simon Yoder's family, let alone Simon now, in his battle and his fight for his life as he battles cancer. Look before a bill to Julia as well. We're praying, Father, for your spirit to be with him. We pray for healing. Father, there are so many names that are on our prayer list that sadly at times they just seem to flow through maybe our routine. We just say a name when we pray or sit there every week, so why would we bother? Forgive us. Probably quickly ignore Al and Katie and Lynn and Pam and Clifford and Jack and Sam and Doris and Bill and Oakley and George, Brooke and Butch and Sue and Celeste and Doris, Brenda and Diane and the Rogers family and Kathy and Bethany Judy and George, and Trevor and Kaylee, Dick, and Carl, and Greg and Gina, and Ken and Dee, and Ed, Bob, Debbie, Jean, Angela and Tana, Jim. Well, on those names that aren't on the list and should be there. We're asking for you to move to work. We're seeing your hand at work in our lives. When we see where we've come from and where we're going as Christians, we give you thanks for what you've done in us. So we give you thanks and praise as we pray. As Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Carrie, do we have something next? Yes, we do. The first Noel. Let's worship together.
pray with me? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Morning, Hope. I gave Hope a nice short reading today. <laughs> I'm going to go hide now. <laughs> This morning comes from uh, the Old Testament, from the book of Joshua, and uh, this comes late in Joshua's life, um, and he's addressing the tribes of Israel after they have settled uh, in the Promised Land. So from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, he says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The second reading is from the Gospel of Luke from chapter 2, verses 21 through 40. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is, what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped day and night, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks. Amen. Thank you. Well, I really should say thank you, Hope. Especially when you slide on the names there like Fanuel or Fanuel or however, who knows how it was said. Neat. Well done. Dedicated dedication. Dedication, this art of perseverance, this ability to endure willingly is a, fra is a phrase, dedication, we throw around. It's thrown around the sports world, business world, church world. It's thrown on the political world. It's thrown around, but it's one of those words I don't know if we really want to put into practice because dedication is hard. There is a cost. We are willing to be dedicated. That means there are lack, there's lack of days off. That means you have to give up things. You have to sacrifice. Dedication is not easy. It is easy to talk about. It's great to read the books about it. But real dedication exacts a cost. And yet, it's important. Being dedicated, especially in our faith, to having a dedicated dedication is imperative. Because the price of not being dedicated is even higher. Not only like that, but it could be our very souls. Dedication is extremely important. Not easy. Exact surprise. But important. Dedicated dedication. 
We'll look at some examples today of those who were dedicated in their dedication. Dedicated dedication is not easy. I mean, that's why New Year's resolutions fall by the wayside so much. The one joke that I read was that, yep, I'm not even going to try to go to the gym this week. I'll give it a month and then the place will be empty. Do you know what I mean? Because it's we have those dedicated, we, we say we're going to change things, but it's so hard to be dedicated. Once the story goes, there was a, uh, a church in the neighborhood church on Sunday morning where they were there for worship. The pastor was about to speak, and suddenly Satan appeared in the front of the sanctuary. People were terrified. They were terrified of the look of this powerful fallen angel, not let alone the fact of fire and the brimstone, the smell in the sanctuary. The folks were terrified. Everyone ran out screaming and yelling. Preacher ran away like a little chicken. It was terrible. And yet, Satan was laughing to himself. He looked over and he saw that there was one gentleman still sitting in the front row. This angered him. What is this old crony doing? So Satan walked up to the older gentleman and said, Why are you still here? Everyone else is terrified. They ran away with the proper amount of fear. Why are you still here? And the older man looked at Satan and laughed. And he laughed. And he laughed and he said, You don't scare me. I've been married to your sister for 48 years. <laughs> Dedicated dedication exacts a price. There are times where it is not easy to be dedicated. Helen Keller put it this way. We can do anything as long as we stick to it long enough. Remember, she's a woman who couldn't see and couldn't hear and yet learned to speak and write. We can do anything as long as we stick to it long enough. Charles Spurgeon, the famous 19th century, which means 1800s preacher, put it this way. By perseverance, the snail reached the ark. Samuel Johnson put it this way. Great works are performed not by strength, but by perseverance. Or maybe you've heard this phrase. Rome was not built in a day. The story goes, every day a fatherless young Chicano boy looked at the country club. But he wasn't allowed in. He didn't have membership because his family didn't have money. Not at all. Not with mom working the jobs that she had to work. And yet he loved the idea of playing golf. As he looked at the country club and the golf course area, he was envious. He wasn't allowed in. Until he worked hard enough and earned the respect of the people there at the country club that he was able to become a gardener. Working for below minimum wage, he slaved and toiled. He still had it in his mind. He wanted to play golf. Finally, he was allowed not only to be a gardener there, but he became a caddy. So he would carry the clubs for other folks who had all the money and they could play as long as they wanted. He was there long enough as a caddy that they allowed him to play a few holes at the end of the day. He worked on his golf game, so much so that he actually had, how do they put it? They actually, he actually had, um, he began hitting balls with a soda bottle wrapped in adhesive tape to practice putting. As he grew and became better with all the work and earning the respect of those of the country club, Lee Trevino was actually able to join and take part in some PGA Tour events. His first U.S. Open, he finished a miserable 54. Now, 54th doesn't sound so bad until you realize that at this point he had this great, almost legendary status as the greatest Chicano or Mexican-American player. But instead of quitting, he kept at it. Ended up winning six PGA Tour events. I should rephrase it, six PGA majors in 29 tour events for a kid who wasn't allowed on the course. Why? Because he was dedicated. Nothing else stopped him but the fact that he persevered. There's something beautiful when we're willing to be dedicated to our dedication. Great things can happen when we are dedicated. And we get to see this in both Simeon and Anna's life as Pope read for us from Luke chapter 2. Now, our Simeon, and the phrase says that he's waiting for the consolation of Israel, which sounds really sad, almost as though, like, they're there, Israel. No, that's not what it means. What consolation in this context means is he's waiting for Israel to get back to its proper place. He can't wait for Jerusalem to no longer be controlled by the Roman tyrannical government. He's waiting also for the Messiah to come. Every day he's in the temple keeping his eyes open. Anybody here want to show up here seven days a week and worship? It's a different model. They have folks in the temple all the time. So downstairs, we just have some folks in the office most of the time, and once in a while, they get work done if I'm around. <laughs> right, Alicia? Well, you don't have to say that. You don't have to just leave that go. 
in reality, they're Simeon every day in the temple worshiping. Not only that, but it, the scriptures describe him as having being filled with the Holy Spirit. How do we put that? He's tight with God. This is before the Holy Spirit was open to everyone. He's tight with God. What's his whole purpose in life? Simeon's waiting for the Messiah to be revealed. Now they bring Jesus in, and what's beautiful here is Mary and Joseph brought Jesus in at the appointed time, eight days after birth, to take him to the temple for him to be consecrated. What's that mean? Circumcision. They also had to offer up a sacrifice. We know Mary and Joseph were poor because of the animals they brought. Two young doves or a pigeon? That means they are poor. So poor they can only use the first two letters, I guess, Pope. And they are in dire straits financially. Yet they bring in Jesus and this poor family who couldn't even find any place to give birth to Jesus. Simeon sees him walk in and he walks up and takes the baby away. How many of you would like that? There it is, time for a baptism here in the sanctuary. Your kids or your grandkids and then some stranger walks up and takes your child. And yet that's what Simeon does. Grabs Jesus and starts pronouncing in front of everybody, this is the kid you've been waiting for. This is the one that is going to change everything. He's the Messiah. Everything's going to change because of him. And the people listen. He wasn't thought of as a crackpot. He wasn't thought of as some wacko. They listened to him. Simeon earned their respect. But because of his dedication, they listened. And then the words are, Simeon was ready to die. Because this is what he'd been waiting for his whole life. We have Simeon who was dedicated. And then we've got Anna who was dedicated. I find it beautiful because Anna was a woman. That's not why it's beautiful. They listened to her. In that culture, women were at best slaves and maybe nothing worth nothing more than some sort of midnight activities. That's what women were good for. They were good for that. Maybe work around the house. They didn't have rights. They were lower than slaves. And they listened to her. This is outrageous. This is incredible. Maybe it was because Anna was so dedicated to being in the temple that she was there, there every day. She was married for seven years, so she was probably married around the age of 13 to 16. Married for seven years. At 23, she's a widow. Now, that's rough math. And we just say she's 23, maybe younger, she's a widow. When this passage occurs, she's 84. Every day for 60 plus years, my rough guesstimating math, she's in the temple. Every day. Wow, a dedication. What would she do that every day? She was always worshiping. She was always praying. She was always fasting. She's putting into practice some of these spiritual disciplines we talk about. Always worshiping, always fasting, always praying. When she sees Jesus, she thanked God publicly for what God had done. So all would hear about Jesus, she talked to them about the redemption or restoration of Jerusalem. Which happened for a period of time. And then the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in AD 70. Wiped it out, it's been rebuilt. And even to this day, it's still a hotbed of fighting amongst Christians, Muslims, and Jews. Who really owns Jerusalem? We're waiting for that final restoration when Jesus returns. But Anna announced that it was coming that day, almost 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was born. The people were willing to listen to a woman when they were thought of as useless. And the people were willing to listen to an old man and Simeon. These folks earned the right to be heard. It seems to have been their dedicated dedication change the way people look at them. Now, it's easy to talk about, about that dedicated dedication for changing the way people look at folks, but there's something that happens when we're willing to be dedicated. Joshua, at the end of his life, as we read from Joshua chapter 24, and Hope did her homework and reading the one verse there. Thank you, Hope. Where she knew that that is the end of Joshua's life. He's soon going to die, and yet the words he has is, you know, as they're about to enter the promised land, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There was real dedication to Joshua's life. For us as well. Dedication, oh, it exacts a price. We have a movie clip here from the movie Braveheart. I try not to show this too much, although it's one of my favorites. But there's a point where William Wallace is about to lose his life, and he talks about why he's willing to undergo what he goes through. Go ahead, Bob. That was the quickest clip ever. <laughs> now, let's Bob fix it. There we go. <coughs> Sir, I come to beg you to confess all and swear allegiance to the king that he might show your mercy. 
Only show mercy to my country. Mercy is to die quickly. Perhaps even leave in a tower. In time, who knows what can happen. If I swear to him that all that I am is dead already, Every man dies, not every man truly lives. He's got a goal. Now, on side notes, when Bob clicks on the screen there, often if you double click, because it takes a while because our program's slow, when Bob double clicks, then it skips right through the end of the screen. So really, that's the program, not Bob's fault. So if you're gonna make fun of Bob, you go ahead and try it up there. It is not so easy. We'll just put it that way. Well done, Bob. Great recovery. Every man dies, and every man truly lives. There's a dedication. If you've seen the movie, you realize that he's willing to die for what he believed in. Wow. Where, how do you get to that point where you're willing to die for what you believe in? In the clip here, every man dies, not every man truly lives. For William Wallace, it was about freeing Scotland from the tyranny of the English government. He had a goal, but before he had a goal, he was willing to suffer. He's in prison, and if you see the ending, what he goes through, to die is not a pretty sight. He was willing to suffer. Simeon spent every day in the temple watching for Jesus to come every single day. How many times did he skip out on family events? Did he not get, up, get to go out to go get some great food and sheets? No. Every day, willing to suffer. Anna, every day at the temple, she is there watching every single day. For those of us who have New Year's resolutions, you know it. From the past, where maybe we have caved in all too quickly. I want to lose weight, but I don't want to watch what I'm going to eat. I want to lose weight, but I'm not willing to exercise. It's so easy. To not suffer. It's so easy to cave in when we're trying to, when we say we want to spend less money in the year, and yet there we go, spending money flippantly here or there, or going to places where money seems to evaporate through our wallet. There's got to be a willingness to suffer if you're going to be dedicated. As a Christian, you will suffer if you're willing to be dedicated. Folks may make fun of you, you may be an outcast, you won't be able to do the things you want to do. But if you have a greater goal, the suffering's worth it. That's the other thing. It looks like Simeon and Anna had that goal. Simeon wanted to see the Messiah. Anna wanted to walk closely with God. They were willing to be dedicated. The goal they had helped shape what they'd be. I don't know about you, but when you're thinking about what you want to be in the end, having a goal, it can change how you arrive there. So easy to say, I want to lose weight. It's so much harder to say, I want to lose weight and never have a goal in mind. It's so easy to say, I want to spend less money. It's so much easier when you say, this is how I'm going to get there. For each of us, my hope is that you have that goal. Ultimately, my goal is this. From Philippians chapter 3, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection of the dead. I want to know Jesus. Not go through the motions and know about him. Not be ready for a Sunday morning to preach. I mean, actually know Jesus. Do you have that kind of goal? How do you get there, though? Along the path, you need that guidance. Just like athletes training, you need that help or guidance. We talk about in spiritual disciplines. Anna, every day they talk about her. Worship, she prayed, and she fasted. Some of the spiritual disciplines that have been throughout church history. And so, there are spiritual disciplines of worship and of Bible reading. For us, it's growth groups or prayer groups to help us in our faith. Maybe it's Sunday school for you, whatever it is, some place where you're able to share with others. Where it's in worship, reading your Bible. One reason why we've given up that opportunity for the Moravian daily text, be able to be intentional with some sort of guide to actually read. Fasting, the scriptures talk about that, a desire to give up food so that for a period of time you focus more on Christ. And prayer. Now, you had cards in your, your um, bulletins this morning, right? Y'all aren't looking at them. You did? You still got them? You're going to want to pull them out here soon. 
Those are yours to take. Guess what? They are free. We wanted to charge it for them. Of course, they were printing off your card stock, and since I'm such a nice guy, I made a leash to do all the work. You're welcome. But they're yours for you to take home because it's one of the things that we'll look at this morning at the end of the service for our prayer. Here's why it's so cool. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, put this together for pastors every year after they met for their general conference, every year, so they'd be prepared when they left. It was that prayer to get themselves right. Now, it's got 1700s, 18th century language to it. Some of it's a little convoluted, it doesn't make much sense. As I do this more and more, it makes sense to me. For some of us, it's gonna feel like this is just old language, it doesn't hurt, help me at all. But quite for it. There's some power here as we recommit ourselves. Finally, there's this thing about having friends or accountability. So much easier for me to lose weight whenever I had that person for the UPMC health line to call and she kept me straight and told me, you only lost this much weight this week, you should have lost more. That's not the phrase you want to hear, but that accountability was so helpful. So this dedicated dedication. So much of it's about being willing to suffer, having goals, practicing spiritual disciplines, like reading your Bible, being in worship, prayer, small groups. And it's about that friendship or accountability. Without it, we meander. Without it, it's so hard to be dedicated. But if you want to be dedicated, those are some hints in how to be dedicated. Now there's dedicated dedication. Because dedicated dedication is hard to perseverance. It's a phrase we throw around, but it's so difficult to employ. And yet, it's worthwhile. We're willing to be dedicated. It's incredible what God might do through us. The beautiful thing is when we're willing to be dedicated, how God works and walks with us closer. Talk about a gift. You can't control God. You can pray, but you can't control God. But the more God sees us striving to follow him, the more Jesus through the Holy Spirit enters our lives. Again, you can't control him. You can't make God show up. But something happens when we're willing to follow him. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? I encourage you not to close your eyes now, though. But if you'd like to, go ahead, because you have those cards. But if you would, repeat after me as we pray together. If you do have your hands up, though, I, at least one of them, if you're holding the card, you'll hold it up. Bob, it is on the screen as well. The prayer is further down. It's only a little snippet. You're good, Bob. Friends, let's pray together. I'm no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for thee. Or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee. Or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thou art mine and I am thine. <laughs> so be it. In the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Friends, let's worship together as we prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper.
Here's the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. Friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. My friends, it's an open table today, or I should say open kneeling rails. We have a few chairs interspersed as well. They helped this morning as well. Two chairs over here, one's right here in the aisle, one's over here. If you'd rather remain seated instead of kneeling. If you'd rather stand, that's it as well. It's really about your heart, not about your physical posture. But as I mentioned before, sometimes I need to just get down on my hands and knees because I keep on acting like I'm in control. Whatever it is, my God. It's an open table as well, which means there's juice, there's bread, and it's available to all. Which means you don't have to be a member. It's just about accepting this incredible grace that we find in Jesus Christ as we recommit ourselves to that. There is also gluten-free options there as well in the cellophane paper. If you'd rather partake of that, please do so. And there are some cup baskets at the end of the um, front row pews if you're able to drop off your cup there. And then nothing else makes life easier for those who clean up after us. Friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread that was before him and he broke it, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, remember me. And in that same night, Jesus took the wine that was before him and he poured it, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of this, Let us remember him. Friends, let's celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Would you pray with me? Father, we ask that you bless the bread and make it be the body of Jesus for us. And we ask that you bless the juice. Make it be the blood of Jesus. We ask for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, let's celebrate together. <coughs> sit in one of the white chairs, please do so if you'd rather stand. Remain standing. After years of being attacked, after years of battle, after years of striving to enter the promised land, as Joshua was at the end of his days, he said before they entered the promised land, after they had crossed the river, Euphrates, he said this, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Friends, this might be the time to tell God what gets in the way. You might be asking God to forgive you. You might be recommitting yourself today. You might be saying yes to Jesus for the first time today. Grab a hold of that moment now. Take a moment. Tell God what's in your heart.
God, we thank you that you were willing to send your son for us. Jesus, we thank you that you were willing and were so dedicated to this, that you allowed your body to be broken for us, that you knew that that was your role, that you had that as your goal, to die that we might live. As we eat the bread together, Father, help us to remember this incredible love that your son Jesus has shown us. Friends, let's eat of the body of Jesus together. Let us eat together. And it's the cup of the new covenant, taken from Jeremiah, the Old Testament prophet. This new covenant about how Jesus, you paid the price for us. The Father, you forgive us through the blood, body and blood of Jesus himself, that he paid the price for us on the cross. That as much as we desire to be dedicated, we don't earn our salvation through being dedicated. We earn eternal life because of what Jesus did. We really don't earn it. We just say yes. Father, as we drink together, remind us of the incredible price that Jesus paid for us. My friends, as you partake of the juice, as you hold that cup, he paid the price for you. And so, take up that cup. It's the body, the blood of Jesus shed for you. Let us drink together. As we leave here today, May we desire to be able to say what Joshua said. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. My friends, arise. Be recommitted to the one who was committed so much that he would die for you. Amen. Amen. sacrifice for us, Jesus. We give you thanks for this incredible grace you've shown us. So my friends, as you partake of the bread today, as you hold that piece of bread in your hands, go ahead, grab it now. Let it touch your fingers. As you hold that piece of bread now, be reminded that when you leave here today, you can worship anywhere because of what Jesus has done for us. Friends, let's eat together. as we partake of the juice. Although Jesus used wine in his days, we use juice today. In part, now for our sakes, no one is an outcast. Whether it be young or recovering alcoholics, no one's an outcast. They even use artificially colored water for those allergic to the grapes. Because we give you thanks for all that all are welcome. That we have the 
gluten-free options for those that all are welcome. That's how you practice things in the first place. As you looked around the table, Jesus, and saw Judas, all are welcome. Thank you for your incredible love for us. So my friends, as you partake of the juice, as you hold that cup, a reminder of the blood of Jesus in your hand. All are welcome. You're not special and I'm not special. The one who's special, it's his blood that was shed for us. Let's celebrate his love for us as we drink together. After a long, hard, battle-ridden journey, Joshua looked at the Israelites and said, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I choose today who I'll serve. I'm leaving behind all the other junk. Today I choose to serve the Lord. My friends, arise. I encourage you to choose today to serve Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Turn his face towards you and 
give you peace. Amen and amen.